Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. Now, several months ago, I made a video about my current daily chair of choice, the Logitech Herman Miller Embody Gaming Chair. As I said in that video, and I'll say again today, in my opinion, the chair is the most important part of any desk or home office setup. Good chairs can help keep your body healthy and your back intact. Bad chairs can have the opposite effect. Well, I'm back at it again with another chair video. This time, Quersis was kind enough to send out their Icos office chair for review, and I've been using this chair on the daily for the past few weeks. I'm gonna cover what is, in my opinion, both the good and the bad of this chair. Let's get into it. If you haven't heard of Quersis, it was a company founded in 2016 with the intention in mind to design and develop great products, as well as to shape the future of office and gaming chairs. Today, Quersis delivers to over 30 countries globally with offices in both the US and in Poland. The Icos is a universal sized chair that's designed for people of all heights, specifically stating on their website ranging from five foot two all the way up to seven foot two. The chair weighs in at around 59 and a half pounds and is made out of galvanized, galvanized steel, aluminum, polyurethane, and plastic. Notably, the chair is TUV certified, which is a seal that represents both safety and quality. When a product carries the TUV certification mark, it signifies that the product has undergone thorough testing and meets specific safety, quality, and environmental standards set by TUV, which is an independent product testing and certification organization based in Germany. This specific model is in the panther black color and comes with a pet-friendly velvet, which I have found to be really awesome as I have a corgi named Owen, whom you've probably seen in a few of my other videos if you're a regular viewer so far. And it makes Owen's fur really easy to clean off this chair. So I find it to be a really nice touch. This version of the chair, as of the making of this video, currently retails for 960 Canadian dollars. The build quality is good. Everything on this chair feels solid for the most part, with the only real complaint that I have is the plastic which covers the whole backing of the chair, and that material feels just a little cheap to me. I actually found it too that on my specific model, if you do press against the headrest a bit, it makes an audible clicking sound, which isn't very pleasant. I do personally wish that the backing was made with a different material than the plastic, something like a PU leatherette material that the Secret Labs chairs use, just for example. Overall though, this chair feels pretty solid and I'm certain that it can last for years. The Quersis Icos has three tiers of warranty, the first being the standard five-year warranty, the second being a free upgrade to a seven-year warranty that any Quersis customer can apply for, and lastly, it can go up to a 10-year warranty, which covers the frame of the chair. The Icos, in my opinion, has a great look that can fit into any office, especially in this black color. It has some tasteful branding with some Icos wording on the seat and the Quersis brand on both the front and the back of the headrest, as well as on one of the chair legs. The back of the chair has a slight gamer style design, but in my opinion, it's not over the top and looks pretty cool. The Icos comes in a variety of colors and a choice of materials. Solid woven fiber, pet friendly velvet like this one, and a really expensive Italian Alcantara if that's something that interests you. Quersis has two different styles of chairs, the Icos, which is designed to be more of an office style chair, and the Vaus, which has a bolder design and a distinctly colored backrest which is intended to be more of a gaming chair. So as I mentioned, I've used the Icos chair every single day for the past few weeks for both my job as a software engineer and also for gaming. In fact, a few of my friends and I had a couple of LAN parties over the last couple of weeks. So I've been able to put some serious mileage on this chair given how long I've had it. 
The chair arrived fairly quickly from their US warehouse in Tennessee and was packaged in a cool looking box describing what was inside. Packaging was solid. The chair came with a plastic sheet of instructions in different languages that was intuitive to follow. It also came with an assembly tool which was very helpful. Assembling the chair was pretty straightforward, though there were a few times that I was glad my girlfriend was around to give me a hand. Nonetheless, everything was pretty straightforward to put together, and I was rocking around in the chair in no time. In this day and age, in this day and age, chairs need to have a good amount of adjustability. That's where, in my opinion, the Ico shines. On the left side of the chair is the seat adjustment lever, which is an awesome feature that in my experience with chairs, many don't have. The seat moves back and forth, and you can adjust it to whatever is most comfortable for you based on your height. Also on the left side is a tilt locker, so you can lock or release the chair tilt. On the right side is the tilt force adjuster, and the seat height adjuster. I feel like the tilt force adjuster requires just a little bit more turning than needed to adjust the tilt force, but other than that, it works well. What I really like about the Icos chair is the four-way adjustment on the armrests. In my opinion, this is what makes the Icos stand out. Being able to get the armrests in just the right position can make a big difference to overall comfort. The chair's headrest is also adjustable, which is a nice touch. I'll reiterate again that my current daily chair is the Logitech Herman Miller Embodied Gaming Chair. I note this because that chair is extremely comfortable. And so my first impressions of the Icos were at least indirectly influenced by that day-to-day -day feeling that I get on that chair. There's just no way around this. My first impressions of the chair was that it's firm, but comfortable. The pet-friendly velvet is soft to the touch, and the headrest is also nice. There's a good amount of lumbar support here, but nothing that I would say is outstanding or a game changer. This is in my opinion. The upper seat feels supportive, with a good amount of bolstering on both sides. I found that the more I used the chair and broke it in, the more I liked it. Part of this probably has to do with getting used to the chair from my current one, and part of it has to do with the chair actually breaking in. The headrest is, as I mentioned, a nice feature, but if there's anything that I've learned from the Embody, it's that I don't miss having a headrest. It is a nice feature if you want to just fully lie back in the chair and relax, so if you like having a headrest, this one is pretty comfortable. Overall, for all the little things I can be picky about, I did like this chair. Apart from the plastic backing, which admittedly covers a large footprint of the chair since, well, it's the entire backing, the chair feels sturdy and high quality. I found it comfortable to use, and the amount of adjustability on this chair is fantastic. The four-way adjustment on the armrests and being able to adjust the seat are both wins in my opinion. Where I ultimately do get hung up on this chair though, is the price. As I mentioned near the beginning of the video, this chair currently retails for 960 Canadian dollars. As of the making of this video, you can purchase all of the following just as a sample in Canadian dollars. The Secret Lab Titan for around $679, the Ergonoffice U2 chair for around $945, the Autonomous Ergo Chair Pro for around $559, the Rise Ergo Chair for around $495, even the base version of the Steelcase Leap, which is a highly regarded ergonomic chair, for around $1,000. So overall, while the Icos has some great adjustability options, many of the chairs that I just mentioned also have great options of their own. For example, the Seeker Lab Titan has an adjustable lumbar support, which the Icos lacks, and the Autonomous Ergo Chair Pro, which has several adjustment options as well. Personally, I like this chair. It's comfortable, it has a lot of adjustment options, it was easy to assemble, and it arrived fairly quickly. And by the way, shout out to all the awesome delivery drivers out there. Now, I'm not gonna be switching from my Embody to the Icos. But, but, that shouldn't deter you from at least considering this chair if you're looking yourself to upgrade to a newer one. Do I recommend this chair? Sorry for the interruption. 
I'm currently editing the video that you're watching right now. And uh, I had actually stopped filming right at that point when I was about to make the recommendation because I still wasn't ultimately sure what I wanted to recommend one way or the other. I had something written down, but I wasn't happy with it. So I wanted to take a couple more days as I was editing the video to really think about what I want to say to you as an ultimate recommendation on the Icos. And I kind of want to go back now to what I said about being hung up on the price. There's so much competition in chairs right now. One thing the Icos has going for it is it has a lot of good customization options. There's a lot of different colors that you can choose to use. There's a lot of different ways to make it look like the chair that you want it to look like. And ultimately you'll be able to find one that suits you. So if it was me and I was looking to spend that type of money on a chair, I'd ultimately would just save up a bit longer. And this kind of goes back to what I've been saying on my channel since day one, is to take your time upgrading and creating your desk setup. And that also includes your chair. I would say if I was looking to spend a thousand plus dollars on a chair, I would start to think about a different brand and that would be Herman Miller. So ultimately my recommendation is if it's me, I would take my time. I would save up a bit longer. I just think at 960, the Icos um, isn't worth the money at that price. I think if it was priced $200 cheaper, I could probably make an argument for it. But because there's so much competition on that, lo on that lower end, I just don't see myself personally going for the Icos if it was me. I'm sure if you purchase it, you'll be happy with it. It's just that there are so many other options out there for you to do that I don't think purchasing it for a thousand dollars is the right option. Hopefully that makes sense for you. Anyway, while I'm here, I'm going to do the outro. Might as well do the outro. If you like this video, please remember to hit that like button and please consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon as doing both of those things really helps me out in growing this channel. Um, if you're interested in following me more on the regular, you can find me over on Instagram and Twitter slash X at 2 by Thomas. I've got more tech, desk setup, and gaming content planned as usual, so please stay tuned for that. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya. Thank you.